Hello, welcome to this second video where we're programming coding in Python and recreating something that looks like Minecraft and to do so we're using the uh, Cena 3D engine which came out in about 19... 19, sorry, 2019 or 20... yeah I think it was 2019 it came out. So my code is exactly the same as last time um, in the first video and you can get a hold of this code in the link to that first video or the you can get the link to the code that we we complete in this video um, in this video description and so this looks exactly the same we're in the same position as we ended last time except for our friend here we needed some company I thought so we've got a giant uh, chicken I, he needs a name his name is Mr Goosey so Mr Goosey will help us now the first thing I need to sort out is this horrible red mist so we'll get rid of that and then what we're doing in this video is making the terrain a lot larger. So we've got the, the start for that system um, already underway. So we've already got the purling noise for hills and things like that. So the next thing we need to do is make a giant terrain, but then things will start to slow down and it won't be efficient enough to play at 60 frames per second like we've got now. Um, so what we need to do is make a large terrain out of like smaller subsets like strips of the terrain, and then not have a collider on those subsets, nor indeed the larger finished terrain. So that's a lot faster for the computer to process. But then we just fall straight through the terrain. So what we're going to do is shrink the collider even smaller than this one. I mean, it's handling this size very well. And what did we do? Is this like up 10 by 10 or something like that? Um, what we'd do is just have, let me go to an equivalent kind of area that's kind of flat, so maybe over here. Um, we're going to have just like six by six um, cubes beneath us, and then that's going to follow us around like a hard shell underneath our feet, and it will just suck up the terrain data that we've worked out already for the position or relative to the position of our player. So only that bit will have a collider, which makes the computer work hard but it doesn't have to work too hard because it'll be a small area the rest of the terrain will be like a ghost terrain you won't actually be able we won't really be touching it right so let's get started the first thing i said i was going to get rid of the fog <laughs> or the red fog so let's make it kind of green um and not as bright as that or two 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 and then the density of it i don't know i'll, I'll make even higher. Okay, we'll leave that to see how that looks when we get going. And then the only thing I've changed is this down the bottom. So if you're wondering how do I get the, the, the diamond axe and mobs and giant chickens in, this is how. You can store a model um, by using the load model function and then you just write the name of the object just like last time we were using load oh, I went past it sorry load texture to load in a PNG or a JPEG into a variable so it's exactly the same thing and just like a Cena can find your um, texture as long as it's in the same folder whoops I've lost my folders where am I Python a Cena dev tutorials uh, Minecraft Right, so I've made a folder. So this, where is it? Yeah, this is my uh, second tutorial um, Python code that I was looking at just now. And so in that folder, I've got another one called Assets. And inside there, that's where my grass lives. And then my Minecraft chicken is in here. And in the source folder, we've got the chicken object. So Asina can read OBJs and a few other things. It can't read... Um, FBXs. So I just went to a website. Um, I just put into Google FBX, convert FBX to OBJ, and you just upload your FBX and then download a lib file and an object file, and just make sure. And I just I just put the object file where the original FBX file was, and then in the texture file, um, I just left everything as it was. So there's this chicken PNG file for the, the texture. And material of our chicken. So 
as long as you've got your object files and other assets in the same folder or in a folder inside that, that main folder, Ursina will be able to find your assets. So let's go back to our chicken model. So that's how we load the model. Then we can make a new entity. I've just called it Vincent. Oh yeah, after Vincent Yanez. There he is, Vincent Yanez, who created that Minecraft chicken. He also created the creeper that, and the diamond axe. No, just the creeper that you saw in the first video. And Blender 3D <laughs> apparently made the, the diamond axe. Okay, so I've got a link to this document as well, this attributions and some helpful things. Oh yeah, for the conversion thing inside the um, the same folder that you can find via the link. Anyway, so we've yeah made Vincent, he's an entity, and the model, instead of setting him to a cube, we can set it to chicken model, because we've loaded that model now in there. I've set his scale to one, and you can see how large that is, so you can, you can maybe, if you want him real size, maybe 0 0.1, and then I set his position, X, Z, and Y, done them in a strange order and then um, the texture that that was that chicken.png that I showed you again I don't have to put in assets chicken model whatever that was called slash 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 Ursina will do all that for you it will go and find it as long as it's somewhere within your main folder the same place where this Python code is and then I put double-sided true and let me just set that to false and I'll show you what that does as well as checking out the fog. How will that look? Yeah, it's still like really foggy. Now, you see his legs have disappeared. That's because if I look from it this side, they're not really part of the model. They are, oh yeah, and also under his chin. They are just like cleverly created through one-sided quads. So they are 3D shapes, but they're flattened, absolutely. So it'll only display from one side by default to save on uh, processing, so things run faster. For example, each of these cubes, it won't be rendering inside of it because we can't see inside of it. There's no inside, it's just a, a box. Whereas these legs, we can see inside of it because they're just a, a flat quad exposed. So if that happens to your models that you load in, you can just write double-sided underscore in the middle there, true, and that will sort that out. Right, enough chicken nonsense. Um, I just want to turn the fog down again. Um, 0.01. Okay, I'll have two. I'll have two. And then I was happy with the color. Now, first thing we want to do um, let's make the terrain a little smaller so it loads a lot quicker for debugging as we're building things up. So we want to make, let's make that hard shell I was talking about. So basically we want a little shell that follows us around and is underneath our feet so we can just keep walking around wherever we go and we won't fall through the floor. So um, let's start making that and I'll just leave the existing terrain code as it is. So first we're going to need um, some little shell blocks, some cubes. So I'll call these shellies and that's going to be a list. Is that the first list we've made? Yes. So to make a list in Python we use a square bracket. In like JavaScript and other things we might call this an array. Basically it's a variable that can hold lots of values in it. So if I want to get the first value out, I'd write that we put in there, I'd write index zero and the first thing that we put in there would come out. If I want the next thing, I'd put number one, two, three, four and so on. So we can put this inside of a, a loop like this and then we could plop i, the iterator, inside there and then we can get out all of the things that we've placed on our array. Anyway, what we're going to store in the shellies are cubes. So for i in range and we want to imagine, oh yeah, we want six by six, don't we? So let's call that shell width six. So then we want to do shell width times shell width. So that's similar to our terrain up here where 
a terrain width, uh, the whole terrain is 100 cubes, so 10 times 10, 10 in the x and then 10 in the, the z dimension if we're looking at the ground, uh, sorry, bird's eye view looking towards the ground. Um, but we want to make just a tiny area and then we want to say, let's make a temporary um, object called bird equals an entity and that will that entity will be a cube um, what else do we need to do at the moment well I guess we could give it a collider right now so collider equals a box collider so that's just like a cube collider I guess they call it box so it isn't confused with the model so a collider is a, like a hard shape we're not going to use a mesh Collider. We could use a mesh collider, but the box is the same thing because it's just a cube. <laughs> okay, so um, we want, so we're going to get 36 of these, um, and now we need to store them on our Shelley's array. So we're going to write Shelley's dot append, that means place that on the next available space on our array, and we want to place our bud there. There we go. So we've got six by six, 36 um, Shelleys, like boxes with, so cubes with box colliders on, ready to build our shell. So we need a function called generate the shell. And what that's going to do, it's going to refer to our subject's position and then it's going to um, lay out our mini terrain in a similar way to here so we're using the i divided by the the shell width and i modulo the shell width to determine the x position and the z position um, and then we're going to have to find out the y position so what I might do is see, I might do it differently to what I did in my original program. I might just do it on the fly and see how efficient this is. And then if it isn't efficient, then we'll do it in the, the way I had prepared beforehand. So um, let's loop or iterate over all of our um, shell, shell uh, what do I call them, shellies. Um, range. Um, oh right, so we we want to go over all of them. So I could just do shell width times shell width again. But what if I anyway? I'll, I'll just use something else. I'll use the length um, function, and then you can put a list in here, Shelley's, and then however many things you've put on here, i.e. the length of the list it will return that number. Okay, so it goes from zero, I will go from zero to however many Shelleys I've got. And then we're gonna say your X position. Um, so I want to get out my first Shelley and your X position will equal, as we've done up here, we're going to floor this number, so it's like Minecraft, it's in a grid, um, i divided by um, our shell width. There we go. Now, we also have to add on to this our subject position, because we might have walked, let's say, down the x um, axis 10 steps. So we want to plus the subject position x as well. Um, and we want to floor that whole thing. So let's add another bracket up here and then put a bracket there. Lovely. OK. Um, yes. Uh, now let's do the z position. So that's going to be i modulo shell width plus the subject's 
z. Brilliant. And now we're going to get the y position. And for that, we'll use the Perlin noise. And I'm just trying, I'm just trying to do something a little different here. As I said, I'm just going to basically copy that and paste it here. Which is now a little redundant because we've we've done this already. But I think it might be faster. Um and we just want to take our x position and our z position. So those variables don't actually exist yet. So let's make them exist here. So as temporary variables, because we're creating them with inside this function, they'll exist here and then dissolve when we come out of the, uh, when we finish the function. And I might as well, no, I don't need y as well. Right, there we go. Um, frequency and amplitude don't exist there, so let's just uh, let's just leave that like that and see if we get a an error in a moment. Um, good. So we've got the function generate shell, but when do we when should we call it? Well, let's imagine if we're moving around the terrain, it kind of wants to respond to how far we're moving. So let's go to the update function. We've got nothing in there. And we want to check whether the, the, the player has kind of moved. So if our current position on the, let's say on the Z axis, um, minus our previous position, so we'll call that previous Z, that doesn't exist yet, so I'll have to make that. In fact, let's just make it, uh, where should we make it? Maybe up here. Or maybe next to all my subject stuff. So previous z equals um, subjects z position. And my previous x position equals subjects x position. Okay, so we've got those. So if the difference between my z, my current z position and the previous one is greater than one, or if my subject x position minus my previous x greater than 1, then generate shell. And let's just see what that would do. So I've moved more than one block and generate shell goes over all the shellies that I've got. So they're just cubes and it arranges them so the x position will be um, according to the shell width, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, plus my current position, and then the same for z, and then it will find um, it will find its y height according to its world space, x and z. And I could just put in Shelley's i dot x there instead of x, but it, it fits in not more, <laughs> more neatly if I just create a, a temporary variable. That won't be at any great cost. Right, so I want to check and see if this runs. Um, what I need to do, though, is no longer have my, my main terrain. So let's just... I want to keep my terrain with... Do I know? Uh, yes. No. Let's uh, comment all of that out. Um, I am creating a terrain still, so I can comment that out. And I do need my noise. I do need my amplitude and frequency. Okay, I think we're ready to <laughs> ready to try it out. Oh yes, and I'm just thinking there should be a bug because amplitude and frequency are not known to um, are not known to the update function so they don't really exist 
Um, also, I've just seen um, we're using shell width in generate shell, but that doesn't yet exist in inside there. So anyway, let's save it and just see if we get any of those bugs. Okay, so yes, we're falling straight through the floor. So something is going wrong. Um, it doesn't give us any error message. But let me just um, follow my hunch. So global shell width. Oh, and we need amplitude and we need frequency there. And then we need in the update function, we need previous z, previous x. Oh, prev. Did I call it prev down here? Yeah, prev. Oh, and also, I guess we don't actually generate the shell straight away, so we should probably do that. So before we call run, we'll generate the shell straight away. Right, save that. Run. Let's see what happens. Oh my god, it's actually worked. Okay, so we've got our 6x6, six six, and as I'm walking around, you can see, not very nicely, but you can see how it's changing height, and it's matching the terrain that we saw last mm -hmm. time. Brilliant. I think I can just walk forever. So we've made an infinite terrain, but you can't see it, it's like a shell terrain. Um, what happens if I walk backwards? So the first thing I need to do is get definitely get the texture on here so we can really see what's going on. If I walk backwards, oh my goodness, it's still working. I was expecting it not to work. How does it know that my previous Z Sorry, my, my, my new position, if I go backwards, then my new position is less than it was before. Is it going to be less than one? What if I, have I got far enough to go into minus numbers? Anyway, ah, there we go. <laughs> it's a weird problem to have, working better than you expected. Let's go and sort that out, first of all. So we shouldn't be able to fall off. And we kind of need to be more in the center of it. So first thing we can do is say plus, because this is getting a little long now. Well, actually, we're inside brackets, aren't we? So as long as you're inside brackets, you can go into a new line in Python. So let's just go into a new line there, and bring it up here with some tabs. So we want to say plus half the shell width. So 0 0.5 times shell width so that puts us halfway across our shell and I'll do the same for Z so plus um, 0 0.5 times shell width there we go so it should appear in the middle of the shellies then um, oh yes in the update function what if we moved yeah, into a minus number like I just did? Um, the difference between that and our previous z is going to be like minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So it's we are moving, but it's not going to be great in this number. So basically, you want to say any movement, whether negative or positive, um, as long as that movement, that amount, is greater than, say, 1 in either direction, then do this. So. In other words, we just need the absolute function, and that just returns, if you've got a negative number, it'll just return a positive number. If you've got a positive number, it'll just return the same number, positive. So from numpy, we can import um, the absolute function. Let's just save that. Okay, so we can just go, like the floor function, we can just go and wrap this around with absolute so I'll just return the absolute value of that arithmetic and so if we've gone backwards negative number it doesn't matter it will just return as a positive number 
and we need to do the same here. Oh, another way, this is going to go into a different line. So because this isn't in brackets um, or parentheses, in Python you can use the escape um, character there, and then you can go onto a new line, which is handy for tidying things up. So you can say, or um, absolute is greater than one. There we go. Um, I say that. <laughs> oh, I had to delete a space before it worked. So it is a little fiddly. I want these to line up. That's nice. Is that allowed? Can I do that? <laughs> I'm scared. Let's go back a little bit. A few spaces, no. Okay, that should still work, right? Okay, let's just see how things are working. No, we need we need this texture. So we've got a grass stroke texture. So we want to apply that to um, our shells. Texture equals grass stroke texture. So when we create our six by six shellies. Um, we want to make sure they're a cube, they've got a box collider, and they're the only things that now have a box collider, and they've got a texture. Um, okay, I think I just saved it. And <laughs> I can see that I've plussed half the shell width instead of minusing it. Right, that's because here we're determining the the position of our little shellies, our little cubes that make up our shell, I was kind of thinking in my head, moving the player. No, the player stays where they are. So we want to shift the whole thing to the left and towards us, if that makes sense. Right. Save that. Let's try again. <laughs> See if we're in the middle. Oh, yep. We're in the middle of our miniature terrain that moves with us which is a beautiful thing. I'm getting quite near the edge. Lovely. I'm kind of tempted. I wonder how small you can make this without falling off. I'll leave that for your homework. You can see you can get it really small. The smaller you get this, the more efficient things will run. So now that you can, you can see that we can go anywhere, we've got our infinite terrain um, but we want to also kind of like see what we're walking on um, and then hide this so it's invisible so that this physics still works but the Perlin noise that we're calculating um, will sync up with it will match what we're looking at okay so we need to create not just one great big terrain but we need to build it up like strip by strip um, so that we can make something truly massive without slowing everything down. So first, let's make a... Have I got a terrain already made? Right, I'll make a terrain entity and it wants to have no model and no collider yet. Um, we also need then um, a subsets array subsets array um, and they're going to be a bit like I was going to say they're going to be a bit like the shell um, but they are going to have yeah um, I'll call them uh, sub cubes so they're a bit like our shell cubes our shellies but they're not going to have colliders on. Um, so we're going to make a list of those. So a, a line or a, a, a width of subcubes will make up every subset, and every subset added together will make up the whole terrain. Um, OK, so we then need um, our terrain width. I think I decided, where did I decide that? Sorry. Oh, there it is. Terrain width. So it can bring you back into play. 
want the terrain width. Uh, again, let's be a little braver. We'll go 32 by 30. No, we'll go 10 by 10. So it's a bit faster in development. A terrain width, and then we need a sub width. And that's just going to equal the terrain width for now. That'll be fine. So every row or column, if you like, of our terrain of a hundred blocks, a, a subset, a subunit will be ten blocks. So we're not trying to create the whole a hundred blocks in one go. We'll just make ten, then another ten, then another ten, then another ten. And we can fiddle around with that number for the most efficient way of doing it. Okay. Um let's just start making these. So um, we want 4i in range. First, I guess what makes sense is to make our subcubes. They're like the smallest element. Um, and how, do, how many do we need? Well, we just need enough to make one subset. And each subset has a sub width amount of subcubes. So it's sub width. There we go. And so we're going to say each body equals a entity. And the model is going to be a cube. Um, collider. Oh, we don't need to say anything about the collider. By default, it won't have a collider. Um, let's not even give them a texture or anything yet. Let's just see how we do. Actually, that's all we need. I think it just needs to be a cube. Brilliant. Um, and then. Uh, on our sub cubes array, we can append that um, cube ready to go. Okay, so we've got our sub cubes. Now we need subsets. So for i in range, and how many do we need? Well, we meet, we need however many we need to make up an entire terrain. So it's just going to be 10 times or terrain width times that. So it's just squared, really. Um, in other words, it's terrain width uh, times the terrain width divided by our sub width. And let's just. Um, Cast that as an int. So we need an integer in here. Um, have I missed off a parenthesis? No, I just haven't done the uh, colon yet. Okay, does that make sense? How many like lines <laughs> will make up? So it's like a hundred divided by ten means that we need ten strips or subsets, chunks to make up the entire thing. And it's just going to be an empty entity, really. So my temporary entity, again, if you weren't, if I didn't mention it in, in the first video, I tend to call my temporary entity buds. Um, you don't have to call it bud. It's just a nice short word. So that needs to be a uh, entity. And I'm not going to do anything to it except say maybe model equals none. Okay. Um, right, so what are we actually doing? Uh, <laughs> what are we actually doing? We need to now generate um, a subset. And that means generate, like we did in the first video, basically run this. We want to create some terrain. Um, we could combine it. We don't want to give it a collider, but we do want to give it um, a texture. Okay, so... Um, let's call it generate subset. Oh, got to say we're defining a function. Generate a subset, and we want to run another um, loop for i in range. And what are we doing? We are going from the first cube on our list 
to um, to the last one. <laughs> so that wants to be um, uh, sub width. Then we want to um, then we want to determine um, the x position and z position of those. Um, right. Yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I just had to pause the video. Um, getting a little tired. So um, we want to find out the x position and the y uh, z position, and of course the height of each um, uh, what did I just call them? Each subcube um, for this subset. So um, I'm just going to create another temporary variable here. That will be useful when we make the Perlin noise um, x, and then we need our subcube i um, x will equal i plus now. We don't just want to recreate the same sub width or the same subset, the same chunk at position zero and position one, position two, position three, position one. And that will only go up to 10. And then if we ran this um, function again and we wanted the next strip, then again it will start at zero and go up to the sub width. So what we want to do is pretend that we've gone to the next row as though we've got. Um, subcube 10, 11, 12, 13, and so on on the next row. So we want to kind of like add our subcube index. Oh cool, that spells out psi. <laughs> subcube index. So at the moment when we create our first subset, where are we? Where's our main function? So here they are. So subsets, we want sub cube index will start at zero and I guess we could also make a variable called current subset I'll just um, remind my whoops remind myself what that is sub cube index and our current subset is zero. So in programming world, yet we start counting at zero because we're dealing with these lists. The first item on them will be at index zero. Right. So now we can say, yeah, we're currently at zero. So the first time this runs, i, which is zero, plus zero is zero. And this is the first cube, zero. So everything's fine. Um, so i plus zero, i plus psi. But next time, we don't want to go to psi is 1, because that would be like, again, looking at like the second cube um, position. We want to think about world positions. So we're pretending we've done a whole line of 10. Um, so at the end of this for loop, actually, when we finished it, we want to say psi plus equals the sub width. So that's like going to the next 10 um, blocks, the next 10 cubes. And we also want to have current subset to increment by just one. Um, okay, so we're doing that divided by, um, divided by our terrain width, define the position on the terrain, I'm just wondering, wait a minute. I'm just having a little think here. Um, and I won't give myself much longer. <laughs> uh, where's our, sorry, where's our Shelley's? Generate Shelley's. Hmm. Oh yeah, because our subject position can get bigger and bigger. And we're only draw, drawing from there, so that can be infinite. Ah, but this, yeah, our terrain 
can't be infinite unless we create more and more subsets. Anyway, I'm thinking about the future, um, about how to get this terrain, not only large, but infinite. Anyway, we'll just stick to terrain width at the moment. Um, yes, right. Um, and now Z wants to be sub cubes. More importantly, we're telling the next sub cube where its Z position needs to be. And it's probably um, not knowing what, it's probably complaining because it doesn't know what psi is yet. So we'll make that global function, uh, sorry, global variable. And we need current subset as a global variable as well. Now things have settled down. And then finally, um, let's just go and copy this from our generate shell. There we go. I've almost copy everything there. And we need sub cubes. And also, we'll make a Y here as well, because then we can determine the color. Because um, this is, so remember, our subset is actually what we see. It's not going to be physical. But because it's what we see, we'd want to generate colors and, and textures, if you like, there. Um, so we're using X and Z. It's drawn from the terrain. And we're using frequency and amplitude again. So I need to make those global for this function. Very good. And I'm just thinking of a possible bug that we may encounter. Um, what if, yeah, what if our X position is now, well, actually, I don't know. I was going to say more than what we can handle, but maybe it is infinite already. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> as I said, I'm getting tired and doing things slightly differently, so I don't know what to expect. Right, so we've created our uh, new subset, um, and yes, we need to combine those um, those meshes. So after we've done this, um, we want to say actually, uh, yes, after we've done that we also want to say uh, sub cube whoever you are uh, you your parent is our current uh, subset so subsets current subset so net so the first time it will be the first subset so subset zero then it'll be subset one, two, and three, and so on, as we as we make them. Um, you know what? I'm just sorry. I'm just thinking that if we wanted to make lot infinite amount, we could just make another subset entity here if we haven't got one, and then append it to the, the list. Anyway, let's just keep it simple. Um, so we've got yep, our new subset, then, why is that complaining, what's going on, sub cube parent, oh, sub cubes, there we go, sub cubes, um, so once this loop has iterated over, because we've made the, the cubes um, particular giving them a particular parent entity, we can then say subsets, current subset, combine, but crucially, we don't want to auto uh, destroy our uh, children entities, which are our little uh, sub cubes, because we want to use them again, those entities we want to recycle them and use them for the next um, subset. So that wants to be false. Okay, um, 
and I said we need to do something with colour. Let's just say sub cube um, colour equals colour dot green for now. Um, and I guess we could set the colour, sorry, the texture of our subsets. Of our, yeah, subsets. Oh no, we need the mesh. No, we don't need the mesh. Um, we just want to tell our subset. To have um, our grass stroke texture. There we go. And let's actually run it. <laughs> what on earth we've got? Okay, uh, we've got one error here. For i in range, float object can be interpreted as an integer. But didn't I cast it as an integer? Oh, I haven't encapsulated everything. Well done if you spotted that. So that, parenthesis, is only matching up with this guy. So I need another one in there, and then another one around there. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Is that, that would be pretty good if that's the only bug only bug that we've got. Let's have a look. Oh, well it's running, um, but I can't see anything. That's, uh, <laughs> that's disappointing. So presumably this little white cube is our um, ghost terrain. Oh, you know what might have happened? Did I, oh god, I thought I was going to fall off. Did I forget to actually call this function? generate subset. Now that's a question, yeah, when do we actually generate a subset? Let's do it via a key press so we can just like test it. So we can say if key equals g, oh it's rhyming, then generate subset. Let's see if that works. I was kind of expecting the whole terrain to be here. <laughs> I just forgot that we were doing a strip at a time. So let's press G. <laughs> and it goes wrong straight away. So what's gone wrong? Uh, line 53 in generate subset. Uh, parent equals subset index out of range. What have I done? I thought they were both at zero. Uh, yeah, sub cube index. Oh, did I use I instead of SCI? Well, that should only be for, for here, actually. Nope, I've got all those global variables there. Uh, it was was it line fifty three that a problem was happening on? That's strange. How could we get to this line and there not and there not be a problem, but then suddenly on this line there is a problem. Uh, Oh, because we haven't used subsets before. Oh, have we generated our subsets yet? No, for range. Oh, right. So, yes, subsets. We need to append an empty entity. Well done. Again, if you spotted my bug. Uh, so that's not too bad. I had two bugs there, well, so far, or maybe three because of these parentheses. So yeah, I need to kind of label this. So first, um, create, or instantiate, I should say, instantiate our empty subsets. And this is where we create 
instantiate our ghost subset cubes. Okay, so just as I created that entity and then added it or pushed it, appended it to the subcubes um, list, I hadn't done the same for subsets. So when we were hitting line uh, 56, subset 0 did not yet exist because it has nothing on it at all. Okay, let's run. Which kind of reminds me, what if I try to make too many subsets? If I keep pressing G and it actually works. Right, press G. Ah, we've actually got a subset. Right, that's a, <laughs> a disaster. It looks horrible and <laughs> it's not syncing up with our shell. Cool. So I've never had this bug before. Let's go and just look at the maths over here. Right. I've just divided by the, the terrain width. Also, I haven't floored this number. So I need to modulo there, and then we need to floor the result. Now, what I'm doing a little differently in my prepared code is that I'm actually calculating the Perlin noise here as we're actually generating the subset, which I didn't do in my original my code. I've just seen that we've hit 50 minutes. Don't know where that time has gone. Right, G. Wow, we've got a subset. Let's press G again. Ah, we've got a second subset. G, 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 whoops. And now I've actually gone out of range because maybe I've done too many of them. So what we want to say is, if we're in generate subset, if um, current subset is greater to or equal to the length of our um, subsets, then just return. That means we've got too many already. Um, also, our subcubes color was green, um, but they don't actually want to be visible. So subcubes i dot visible equals false, and then I don't think they'll clash with what's going on. Oh. Current subset is used prior to global declaration. Oh, current sub. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> so we've got to have our global variables first, then do this. So this function will just return, won't do anything if we've gone past. Um, our final subset. Oh, that's looking great. So you can see the green is different from my shell. And if I do GGG, it should all sync up nicely. And if I keep going, now I keep pressing it. So I've got my 10, and it's not crashing this time. So wonderfully, our shell works. And remember, this stuff over here doesn't have a collider, but we won't notice if we just make our shell invisible. So let's do that um, before we make an hour video. Uh, where's our shell? It was down here. So in fact you don't need a texture anymore. And we just want to say bud.visible equals false. Let's just see if that now looks as it should. I should be floating in the air. Yeah, press G. Then I've got some terrain. Wonderful. Okay, so let's make it a little larger and see how our performance is. Um, which we can just change with one number. So can, make, can we make 100 by 100? 
and my challenge before the hour is up. G, there we go. G, 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 G. Well, they generate pretty quickly. I hope this doesn't sound too bad, sorry, in your earphones, if you're wearing earphones. Uh, but there we go, we've got pretty damn big uh, terrain. So, big finish, what I want to do is automatically generate those. So using like a small timer, we could try and make one every tenth of a second. See if that is okay. Um, and then let's play with the Perlin noise to finish. So I've got just under five minutes. So first thing, I want to automate that process. So in update we can say um, we can say if time dot time that's to get the current time in seconds minus uh, previous time so a bit like our previous z and x for when we're walking around previous time is greater than we'll say 0 0.1 then we need to go and generate a new subset and we don't have to worry about generating too many um, because if we go into generate subset if we've got um, the total amount of subsets it will just return okay so previous time doesn't exist yet and in fact I'm gonna to have to make this global so let's do that already um, and hopefully time exists do I have to I might have to import time actually import time there we go so we've got the time module um, oh yes previous time um, I'll make that up here time feels like it's important previous time equals uh, time dot time okay run so two minutes left yes and it's generating right that slowed down our frame rate it says 60 but it feels very jolty and it almost glitched through glitched through the floor there and now it's it's created the whole terrain now we're back up to our familiar frame rate or it looks like we are it's hovering around 28 29. So what we could do is, after we've made all the subsets, we can make each subset a child of like one empty terrain thing, entity, and then just combine them all right at the end. That's what I've done in my previous code, and then I've got even larger terrains than this running twice as fast. Actually, my frame rate might be due to me recording the uh, the video. I'm not sure. Anyway. I've got one minute to just make a more interesting terrain. Let's just actually slow down that to like 0 0.4. And then, so that'll be less jolty. We'll still make 100, shall we? And where's our um, terrain information? Right, here we go. No. I'm just looking for Perlin noise. You've probably seen it disappear a thousand times. Right, there it is. I have no idea why it's under here. I need to bring this to the top next to all my other terrain stuff. There we go. Right, so amplitude, let's go up to, I don't know, 64 by 100. So f amplitude, again, is just how high you want something maximum height and frequency is kind of like um, the lower the number is the more like stretched it will be between each um, step up so the higher you get it the smoother things run and octaves um, we maybe go for four maybe three right run this I've got less than 30 seconds <laughs> whoa That looks crazy. Let's escape. So let's just bring down the octaves to two, uh, maybe this down to 32. 
And now run. I've got. Oh no, I've got one second. This actually looks pretty decent from the other side, but I can't see it. Oh, there we go. Yes. The hills are alive. And here's our lovely. Uh, that's a pretty good screenshot. <laughs> Yes, that's fantastic. So, um, since I've gone over the time, let's just write one final thing. Um, let's just write, and actually that was, again, it was just kind of interrupting. It was a little too fast. Um, so, let's say if we've generated all the subsets, then before we return, we can say, generate um, terrain or finish terrain I guess we could call it finish terrain um, now I need to write that death finish terrain and all we're going to do here is combine the subsets so that should improve performance um, so, firstly, um, all subsets that I make, there they are, empty, so my comments have come in handy. So I've made subsets, and I just want to make its parent equal the main terrain uh, entity. Did I actually leave that somewhere? Oh, God. Yeah, terrain equals model. It's not got collide or anything. Lovely. Okay. Um, and it doesn't want to be visible. Um, I'll just leave that right. <laughs> Let's just worry about whether it looks okay in a moment. So, finish terrain. Um, yeah, parent of each subset is the terrain. So now I can say, terrain, could you combine um, your tri children? Um, if I leave it like that, it will auto destroy all the subsets. So let's just leave it like that. Oh, finish, finish terrain. Um, also, this might, this would actually slow, the, the combine function is very slow. So we might glitch through the terrain. So a way I get around that is we can call application pause. So to stop all the physics and everything, then go and combine the terrain and then resume the application so that won't glitch us through the train I say confidently <laughs> right so it's creating my terrain I'm uh, able to kind of move around I should have dropped us onto the train from a higher point so it's almost finished right now it's um, pausing And it's, oh, now you can definitely see the uh, the difference. Oh, it's completely glitched out. <laughs> I've dropped down to six frames per second and I can't see anything. Oh, and now, now you can see I've dropped right through the floor. So, yeah. Oh, I know what's happened this finished terrain was being called every time so I need to say um, if okay if uh, terrain finished equals uh, true then return um, so if it doesn't, uh, so then we want to say uh, terrain finished equals true. There we go. Um, and now I need to create that. See, I'll just create this up here. Terrain finished equals false, capital F, and global uh, terrain finished. <laughs> okay. 
So let's just try that again. Oh, I should have changed our uh, subject position. I wish I had more fog now. Ah, make it look a bit more spectacular. So it's creating the subsets. Now, I did, you know what I was unhappy with? I did glitch completely through. Yeah, I glitched again. And we still got 30 um, <laughs> frames per second. <laughs> we haven't got the 60. So that last thing I've just done. Oh, no, we have got. We did just get our 60 frames per second. So it's maybe not a complete disaster. Anyway, um, what we do need to do is um, maybe, maybe say our subject y is... Uh, 32 and then um, we need to say uh, terrain uh, texture equals grass stroke text and again I haven't Put the subject height up here. <laughs> okay, I think it's finished. Oh, oh, I didn't glitch through this time. Brilliant. And there we go. It's running nice and smooth. Um, but I haven't got my. <laughs> I haven't got my 60 frames per second, which is the whole point of doing that last thing. But our terrain is looking correct. Okay, so the next video we need to like change the colours of um, different uh, different areas depending on their height and things like that, um, and some other things. So I'll talk about that in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Leave any comments. Um, see you next time. Goodbye.